Hey, Facebook, it's Sarah McLaudry from Synergy Behavior Solutions, and welcome to our Tuesday Facebook Live chat. Um, it is gray and yucky in delightful Portland, Oregon today. Um, we are here to talk about things you've learned from, I went to the Geek Week and spoke at the Geek Week talk um, for the Pet Professional Guild last week, weekend, and it was an amazing conference. Um, I sometimes I hate these little review talks because then you're like, oh, why didn't I get to go to that conference? Why did I not sign up? Um, but I think it's really important to help share the details that you learned. And maybe then when somebody sees that speaker the next time, they'll sign up for the conference. Um, so if you attended PPG's Geek Week and you have some comments, please go ahead and put them in the comments. If there was something that was amazing to you and you really want to talk about it, or if you have any comments about the people that I am going to talk about. It was five days, 24 seven of 45 minute ish talks. And there was, I think, oh, I don't even remember the number of different speakers. I gave three presentations. I gave the power of predictability, which I talked about a little bit last week on Facebook Live. Then I did a quick games for behavioral change, which is a fun classical conditioning games that you can easily teach clients and dogs in a first session that you're with them. And then I did a talk called Horny Hounds, how intact dogs can impact your business. Because a lot of professional walkers, dog care providers, trainers, don't have a lot of experience with intact dogs and how they can help their business. Um, so those are the three talks that I gave. Pretty wide variety there. What's really exciting when you end up at a conference and you start to find um the little bits of how all these talks are related without even realizing it because ppg when they had a switch to the online model anybody that was going to speak at their conference this year they went ahead and asked us to do online presentations and they gave us total like said go ahead do whatever you want to do let us know um so we submitted our talks and then you get to the actual conference and you start to find how all of these different pieces are connected without even realizing it. So, hey, Mallory, oh, you missed the registration this year. Definitely next year. Um, hopefully we'll get to be in person again next year because I am scheduled to speak at that too. Um, and hi, Laura, she said approximately 80-ish speakers. That's what I thought, but I didn't want to misspeak. Um, so all of a sudden you're sitting in these different talks and you're like, oh my gosh, this totally connects with what this other person was saying, things like that. So a couple of things that were super interesting for me is talking back about classical conditioning. So my own talk, the quick games was all about classical conditioning. And then my power of predictability talks a lot about classical conditioning also. And then Carolina Westland did an amazing talk about the power of Pavlov that I actually have to even go watch again to really get fully in depth. I started it and it was like, this is way too important to ignore. And I need to get my, um, oh, Laura's saying 180 speakers. I thought it was only 80. Oh, awesome. Even more. Um, so her power, so Christina Westland's power of Pavlov was really, really interesting, very in depth. The other one that I actually um, did listen to from hers that was really interesting and connects with a lot of what I'm doing personally right now was the Who Controls the Session. And that was a talk all about start buttons and stop buttons. We don't talk a lot about stop buttons, uh, which I am in my cooperative care class that I'm teaching right now. I think stop buttons are equally as important as start buttons. And so really, she talked a lot about that. And we ask our pets and our the animals that we share our lives with to participate in all sorts of different training and husbandry skills and things and maybe they're just not in the mood at the moment and or maybe they're too stressed or maybe they were in the mood and now they're not etc and really that's where that start and stop button happens and really letting them control their time with you i think is so critically important um, i know christine uh, carolina wesson also talked about um, Eva Bertelsen of in Sweden, also who's a friend of mine. And she's kind of the one that started championing this concept of start buttons along with Emily Bay, Johnson Bay, um, who runs Carpe Diem. So I totally, they're good friends of mine and I adore them. The other talk that was a simple, like it, on the, when you read the description, you're like, oh, that's a simple talk. Do I, should I go listen to that. Sometimes it's really important to go back to the basics. And so I went ahead and I always love listening to what Kay Lawrence has to say. 
and she only gave one talk and it was about the difference between management versus training. And it was such a good reminder about how we, how to look at when we're training and working with clients and as pet owners, what are things that we can do that manage situations which take way less energy from us and then versus what we need to actively train and then she also talked a lot about passive learning which is a topic i don't think most most trainers are talking about and how much passive learning is actually going on that we're not super aware of she talked about it in relation to house training um, and also some dog dog relationships with multi-dog households and it was like one of those light bulb moments like, oh, why are we not talking about passive learning? It's happening all the time. Every interaction that we're having with our pets, we're, they're always learning actively or not. And so can we harness that power of passive learning to help our pets be more, you know, more aware that they're actually learning that situation and then we are using it to our best interest also. And so that was really interesting to listen to that again and go back to, you know, Go back to the basics on management versus training. And like I said, I love how some, some of these talks dovetail into each other. And so Kay Lawrence's talk about management versus training, I thought actually went great with uh, Jean Donaldson spoke about how to do actually Zoom. She did some case studies and how to do use Zoom or long distance online learning for to your success as a trainer. And what struck me again is, and I'm doing a ton of, on, uh, that's mainly what we're doing right now is online training. I feel like I've gotten pretty good at it, but once again, always good to listen to what somebody else has to say and see if we can get some tips. So one of the reminders for me from her was that whole concept of bandwidth. We, clients come to us because they have a problem and they need it fixed. And what can we do to get kind of the most bang for our buck from the training side of things? And how can we use whatever small bandwidth that these clients have to then have them be successful? Because most people don't get pets. I always say this to clients. You didn't get a pet to become a professional dog trainer. Now, I know some of you have, and most of us dog trainers had a pet that made us become a professional dog trainer. That's how we got into this gig. But your average pet person, they just got a pet because they want a pet and now they have a problem. And what can we use with that? You know, how can we set up their management versus training to be successful with what little bandwidth they have and ability to do training? And so that was a great reminder and how to triage what skill, you know, what skills they need immediately, where, what are safety issues, what if we say are there certain skills that we can train that will then trickle down to all of our some of our other issues that maybe we're just managing right now? And so I love how Kay Lawrence is talking about management and training versus training. And then Jean's talk about how to do Zoom talks, which you didn't think would be connected at all. We're totally connected and a really great reminder of just some of those basics that we sometimes forget. I, I say a lot to my fellow trainers that I get worried that sometimes as a trainer at a veterinary behavior clinic, especially, so we're dealing with pets with major behavioral problems. Sometimes we ask people to do things in the name of training that even as a professional trainer, I wouldn't want to do, or I wouldn't have the time to do. And we really need to think about that balance of what are we asking from, for, from our clients and the pets. Then um, I've never seen Amy Cook speak. So Amy Cook did a couple different talks and sometimes you go to those talks and you're like, ah, I don't, I, I hope this helps me. And, and then you come out with a light bulb moment and you are so excited. Um, so we have a lot of clients with noise sensitivity and it's a really challenging problem to have a dog with noise issues and noise reactivity and Amy's talk about noise sensitivity was excellent her explanations of it were to the point and very concise and very understandable the she gave some great tips that are, we're going to use in our training here at synergies that kind of fills in our gaps I always felt like there was something missing from our noise sensitivity work and it's like aha now I found it so that's great. Um, so I'm super excited about her noise sensitivity talk. She does do um, some classes online through the Fenzi Academy. So you can check her out that way. She, of course, has a website. Um, 
Oh, Mallory just made a comment. Immediate solutions management to a lead versus long-term solutions training. Super interesting topic. Yes, it's really important. You need that immediate help. And that's actually Amy Cook's talk talked about that too. The Laura says that Amy Cook was outstanding. Yes, very relatable, very understandable as a speaker. But my favorite quote from her, and we're going to turn this, she doesn't know this yet, but she doesn't even know me, but um, hopefully she will. The I'm a little fangirling right now. I think I, I, um, um, I hope it's okay. I'm fangirling for Amy Cook. Um, so I'm going to make this into a meme. Like I said, she doesn't know yet, but we're going to do it. Uh, it's called, her quote was, emotional changes require making big emotional impressions. And Take that to heart. Think about that for a second. Um, and that's where she was talking about classical conditioning. You have a dog with a phobia of whatever it is. Let's say it's beeping. Uh, Fed, I have a lot of clients with FedEx truck beeping diesel engine sound issues right now. And so imagine that. But every time they hear it, they're super scared. So what can you do to make a big impression that that is not such a scary, horrible thing for them? And I love that concept of really taking the time to think of what is the big emotional impression for your dog. Every dog is different. Could it be, can it be food? Can it be play? Can it be touch? Can it be lots of different things? Car, actually Jean Donaldson in her talk, she talked about car rides and how reinforcing going in the car can be for some dogs. And so once again, there we go. I didn't even think about how that talk interconnected with Jean Donaldson's talk because they were all talking about classical conditioning. And so that was a great way. Um, Jean, in one of her case studies, was talking about how the um, it was some human directed reactivity and how the person that was being reacted at didn't really want to, wasn't really bought into the program. It wasn't her dog, and but it was her boyfriend's dog. And so how could they make that big emotional impact and impression for the dog when she came over without the girlfriend having to do it because she didn't really want to do it. Um, she didn't really like the dog. She was getting aggressed, aggressed at by the dog. So once again, all interconnected. I, I get so nerdy excited about these kinds of things. Um, also, um, Amy Cook talked a lot about in one of her top in one of her talks about social play, which was very interesting. Social play, not play with toys, but play just between you and your dog. Um, which is a hard skill for many to learn. And she talked a lot about that part, part of it too. But she talked again about how dogs, every, everybody, you need to look at things. And there's a whole look at that game by Leslie McDevitt. And she talked a little bit about that, that part. But the, how our dogs need to look. And if they're in a situation where they're looking and you're having to constantly play the look at that game, and they can't disengage within three seconds. And, or if they don't disengage within three seconds, they're erupting into reactivity. She said, she just was a good reminder of you're too close and you're at threshold. If you, if your dog cannot disengage and evaluate the situation, you know, we're wired us too, to check out what's going on in our environment. And if you are locked in, you know, imagine, I think about it as like, you're out on the street, maybe taking a walk and you see that car and you're like, oh my God, a bike accident is gonna happen right now. I cannot turn away and you get sucked in. Nothing else is happening there. And you may need to turn away for whatever reason, like maybe somebody else is trying to get your attention, but you can't because you are sucked in and you are too close to that. Now, if that was a mile away and you can't see it, maybe you could hear it. You might go, oh, what was that weird noise? There's, I think there was just a car accident. But you're not going to, you're just going like, oh, okay. Oh, I hear fire injuries. Oh, okay, cool. I'm going to go on. They've got it taken care of. And so she really talked about how when the dogs get sucked in like that, it's, we're too close and back up. And we say that all the time to our clients, back up, back up, back up. We run a, our, many of our clients live in very densely populated urban areas and it's hard to give that. So we, um, somebody this weekend, again, talk, oh, Michael, um, of aggression in dogs, he talked uh, again about thunder caps or calming caps, whatever you want to call them. They go by both names um, and the use of those, which we do use in our practice. Um, and so how can you, you know, how can you set up those distances that your dog can look and evaluate and make some of those decisions, but not feel they need to react? And I know it's tricky to find those distances sometimes, but if they are getting stuck staring and then reacting when they're stuck staring, they are too close to threshold. 
you have to think about allow them to stare, allow them to evaluate. That's fine. Look, go ahead. Look, look, it's not going to eat you. The boogeyman's not out there. Evaluate it and let's move on. She talked about a lot, Amy Cook did, about how to use social play as a barometer in those situations on is your dog able to function? Because we all have met those dogs that no matter how stressed they are, they eat still, or they maybe want it the really high tug dogs or ball dogs, and they'll still play. Um, but when you take the toys and the food away, will they still just play with you? And so she has a whole program about how to use social play that I am very interested in and I'm going to do more information about. Um, but with that social play talk, she talked, another great quote from her was, if you're not laughing together, you need to make a change. And that's a great thing to think about when you're doing desensitization and counter conditioning because you can't laugh and have fun if you're stressed and worried that the boogeyman's going to get you. And so how can you change the scenario that you could be having fun in the presence of the boogeyman? That way, if you can laugh and have fun with your dog or, you know, what your cat or whatever, then you know you're under threshold. And that was one of those another like light bulb moments. We so frequently use our food as our barometer, but being able to interact in a different way is such a good barometer and such a good reminder. So I'm not sure if the Pet Professional Guild is going to make some of these talks um, on demand post conference. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I attended the Control Unleashed conference and they have made the conference afterwards um, available. So, which also is a great conference and lots of fun stuff there, um, lots of great talks too. I think what was really awesome about the Pet Professional Guild's Geek Week is the depth and breadth of knowledge and types of speakers was just awesome. Um, you had PhDs, oh, Roxy. Hi, Roxy. Roxy owns um, my litter mate to my little Lindy, um, her dog named Scout. Um, I love Amy Cook, too. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, totally. Um, I've never seen her speak. I don't know how I've missed her for this long. And I've seen her, like, I've heard of her. I know who she, I knew her name, but I'd never seen her speak, so new fangirl. The, um, so I don't know if Pet Professional Guild is going to make some of these talks on demand. I sure hope so, because nothing's worse than missing the deadline for whatever reason uh, to sign up. So hopefully they'll make some of them because they really were gems of talks. And what I actually appreciate is that they were all about 45 minutes. So not a huge time commitment because guess what? I have limited bandwidth, just like Gene Donaldson said. Um, so the other thing that I want to call out to all of my fellow uh, trainer friends out there is we have talked a lot lately about inclusivity in our industry. And our industry is definitely uh, white women, a lot of us, I'm going to talk, say that. Um, we, are, we are lucky that we have Dr. Volley, who is not a white woman who runs our practice. But as a general, there's a lot of white women in dog training. And, but we have, so we're looking at inclusivity and we really want to think about that. So we want to give those voices. But the big thing with a lot of these online um, conferences is the lack of closed captionings. So I, if you haven't watched my talks for Geek Week and you have a hearing issue, please know that all of my talks were closed captioned. So please go watch them. Um, it's a really simple thing to do nowadays. Yes, the closed caption is not 100% perfect, but it's amazing how great it is. I was shocked at how good, and I just used mine in, um, uh, oh gosh, total brain fart there. Um, so they have it on Zoom, um, but also in, I'm gonna say Premiere, that's not the program. Um, stupid Microsoft program that you make slideshows with. Someone save me in the, te in the text. Um, it's just a button that you click on and that's all it is. And so why would you not click on that button and help people be able to be accessible to your talks? Um, we are here at Synergy, we are trying to do a much better job of having captions. These Facebook Lives, when we're doing them, it's uh, you can't caption them, but what we do is we go back and in the recordings, we've been adding captions. So please folks, if you're doing online talks, add your captions in, it opens up your audience. Sometimes like right now, I'm talking real, real fast. Um, it's hard to follow. So go ahead and put your captions on and help give some inclusivity to our dog training world. Well, as you can tell, I was pretty excited about this weekend. I think I've rambled on long enough about Geek Week. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, 
if you have any questions about the talks I talked about or um, people that you want to go check out, please leave them in the comments. Like I said, I saw um, Carol Carolina Westland from um, overseas, I think Sweden. Um, Kay Lawrence is in England. Amy Cook is here in the States. Definitely go check out their stuff. I think you can learn a lot from all of those. And thank you to Pet Professional Guild for putting together such an amazing conference and letting me be a part of it. I was really honored and very excited to get to do three different talks for them. And thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, drop them in. I'm Sarah McLaudry from Synergy Behavior Solutions and look forward to talking with you guys soon. Bye.